Uh, the program is Let's Talk on Love World Plus, and my name is Zoe Okafo. Now, it is no longer news, really, that uh, the Nigerian government is renewing plans and calls for the removal of subsidy on petroleum products and fuel, actually. Now, in the 2013 Nigeria Summit, which was organized by the financial magazine The Economist, uh, Mr. President Gulok Jonathan actually did say that the government would no longer waste resources on um, these subsidies in order to, um, you know, sort of subsidize the affluent middle class, to use his words, who are the main beneficiaries of these subsidies. And Nigerians are asking, really, is there really a benefit to the removal of oil subsidy? What does it mean for Nigeria's economy? Is there any other way to do it? These are some of the things that we are going to be looking at in today's discussion. And to help me do that, I am joined by Patrick Olisemeka, who is a social expert. He is also an analyst as well as the MD of Mid Speech Nigeria Limited. It's, a great, it's great to have you on Let's Talk today. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. All right. So we are talking about um, the fuel subsidy and, um, you know, the renewed calls by the Nigerian government to remove subsidies on fuel. Now, first of all, um, what, what is your response to that announcement that definitely whatever happens, subsidies are going to be removed? Did you, did you expect that? What, what, what was your response to that announcement? Well, it didn't really take me aback uh, because there's this saying that he who the gods will destroy, the first make mad. The government is there to lead the people, but their efforts and their concentration is not on giving Nigerians good social living. All they are trying to do is enrich themselves. They are very narrow-minded, looking only at the things that benefit the few who are in government, who are in power. They are talking about removal of fuel subsidy. Why should the government be thinking of removing fuel subsidy at this point in time? They will tell you they want to create more jobs, they want more money to be able to you know, create social amenities and stuff like that. But that is just an excuse. If we look at the track record of government, especially this government, in the last two or, or so years, you will discover that all the monies that have come into their hands have either gone towards building uh, African Women's Forum, you know, a pet project of the First Lady, or building you know, uh, six or seven billion Naira mansion for the Vice President, when there are people, where there are hospitals that don't even have drugs. We have hospitals that are just uh, consultation centers. People, you cannot get drugs. People who are sick have to travel abroad, to travel to India and such, you know, the like. I don't believe that government is sincere. There's so many, there are no roads in Nigeria. The road infrastructure is terrible. There's no water. There's no electricity. All that, and then you have a government that all they want is take as much money as they can from the system so that they can spend it on their glutinous activities. Okay. I think it's, 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 it's uncalled for. But like I said, it, he who the gods will destroy, they will first make mad. They will make them begin to do things that are so inimical to the interests of people that it will cause the people to rise up. And I think it is time that the people begin to see beyond what the government is telling us. Okay, let's, let's look at um, the removal of subsidy and how it works. What, what really is, what, what's the impact on the Nigerian economy? If this were to happen, what does it mean for the Nigerian, really? Well, theoretically, if you removed the subsidy, uh, it would mean that government would have more money to spend okay. on social amenities, in job creation, provision of electricity, provision of the necessary infrastructure that we are all yearning for. The truth is, removal of subsidy, as it were, is something that will put more money in the hands of government. My problem is not that government should not have more money, is what do they do with the money that now comes into their hands? If this money is not judiciously spent, then they would have further impoverished the average man at the expense of the upper, uh, they keep saying middle class, middle right? Class. I would rather I'm, say I'm upper middle class. That, yes. uh, in fact, there's no middle class in Nigeria anymore. You're either very rich or you're just 
struggling to survive like every other, every other person. So it's not really benefiting anybody. It's just going to benefit the elite. And these elite don't buy fuel by themselves. Most of them are government functionaries, so their fuel, their cars, their drivers, everything is provided for by the taxpayer. So at the end of the day, it is the masses that are bearing the brunt of all these subsidy, so-called subsidy remover, and no benefit to okay. them. No benefit. Okay, okay. Um, theoretically speaking, also, um, you know, before we get to the um, government's defense or what they're saying mm -hmm. uh, as to why subsidies will have to be removed. Now, um, what really is in? Okay, let, let's look at it this way. If, if fuel is going to, if uh, subsidy is going to be removed from fuel, now you will recall that at the start of the year, you remember what happened. I don't really want to yeah. go into all that. All right. But you saw what happened. You saw how the people for the first time rose up and said, you know what, I think we've had enough of what is going on. We also saw um, some probes, you know, that started, that began. And um, up till now, we've not really seen any logical conclusions to any of these probes. Now, you know, the question is, if the government were to go ahead with that, what would you see as a sort of um, result of that effect? Well, if government were to go ahead, you know, resolved in removing the fuel subsidy, in quotes, um, I see a situation where we we'll return back to what happened January last year or thereabout. There will be protests by the people on the streets. The trade unions will rise up and say, no, we're not going to have it. Enough is enough. The various political parties will ride on to that bandwagon and again say, we don't want it. The government in power will try to tell us that that is the best thing for us. At the end of the day, government will have its way. And this is most unfortunate. It shouldn't be, but it's most unfortunate. Why would government have its way? Government would have its way because the average Nigerian lives from hand to mouth. Their ability to uh, continue uh, protest ad infinitum is very limited. If you see what happened in the Arab Springs, in those countries, people were coming out in their millions on the streets and they refused to go back to work. One day, two weeks, one month, two months, three months, they kept pressing on the things that bothered them. In Nigeria, because of our nature, the forecanizer lives on what he gets today. today yeah. By tomorrow, he's run out. So if you want him to go on a prolonged protest, he is not Absolutely. able to because he has to put food on his table. He will say, well, if I continue like this, I won't have anything for my family. And so he will. So I will see that there will be outcry. There will be protest. But it's going to be short-lived, okay. unfortunately. It's going to be short-lived. And government will eventually say, okay, after all the uproar, the protest, they'll say, okay, instead of making it this amount of money, we'll yes. reduce it, let everybody will go back happy, but government would have ended up having its way. way, most unfortunately, okay. most unfortunately. Okay, now, apart from the government's position, you know, on the matter, um, some economists have predicted that removing fuel subsidy, that that is actually the right way to go. So let's look at it from that angle. Can Nigeria indefinitely go on paying subsidy for these products without some sort of repercussion on the economy? Can we afford to keep subsidizing petroleum products and fuel? Um, absolutely not. Um, I'm not an advocate of subsidy remover, but there's a lot of sense in removing subsidy. Uh, in every advanced society, you allow the laws of demand and supply to dictate the pricing of the commodities that people buy. So if there's a lot of supply, the prices will come, come down. down yeah. If there's a lot of, you know, a, 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 a reduced supply and a lot of demand, the prices will go up. In every society, that is how it should be. In Nigeria, unfortunately, we subsidize everything, which shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Government can realize a lot of income by removal of the fuel subsidy. The issue is, what do they do? What will happen to the vast sums of money that government will suddenly have at its disposal? 
Are they going to use them to build more hospitals? Are they going to use them to build more schools? Are they going to use them to develop the infrastructure and all the, as it were, wealth creation and job creation activities that makes an economy to become buoyant? Because if all we're going to do is buy more planes for the presidential fleet or buy, build more mansions for people in GOP, those things are not productive economic activities. They are not going to generate employment. They are not going to increase the GDP. They are not going to make Nigeria a better society. Okay. You understand? They are not. So we must, along with deregulation, bring in professionalism in the management of government resources or the resources that are accrued to Nigerians. The NNPC, the Nigerian police, the Nigerian customs, they must be all managed in a way that is professional, in a way that makes them accountable to the people of Nigeria because they are actually stewards, they are servants of the people. They are there to serve the Nigerian people. Unfortunately, they see themselves as overlords over the Nigerian people. But I dare say that the time is coming when the bottle will begin to stand upright when things will begin to work well, and then our leaders will suddenly realize, you know what? We are not the lords, we are not the masters, we are the servants. And there's a, a Bible saying that says that he who must be the leader must first be the servant. But here, we don't want to serve, we just want to lead. The Nigerian people have a problem as well. They have failed to realize that they have a power. All power belongs to God. And it is in the custody of the people. Voix populé, voix doua. The voice of men is the voice of God. And the Bible says that whatsoever you agree here on earth is agreed in heaven. Whatsoever you disallow here on earth is disallowed in heaven. Therefore, if the Nigerian people will rise up and decide we have had enough of this, we have had enough of this, we want accountability from our government, the government will have no other response but to become accountable. But because we do not demand it as a right, we do not demand it as a precondition for government to do certain things, we just take it as if, well, they just promise you, uh, like in the last time, they say, oh, we are going to do this, we are going to build more hospitals, we are going to do this, we are going to do this, and everybody to the tent Israel, and one month, two months, we are going to probe, we we'll make sure that all the corporates are, you know, justice is, are, are brought to justice, are brought to book. One year plus down the road. Not seen Where anything. are we? nothing has happened okay. because the people refuse to demand accountability from their leaders and we must begin to do so okay now um, from what you're saying one would uh, infer that <coughs> you are suggesting for um, a violent uprising is that what you, you mean is that what you're far, talking about uh, far from it not okay. violent uprising how can I I love Nigeria I'm a Nigerian so if he who preaches violence must encounter violence I'm not preaching I'm asking for people to rise up, for people to demand their right. You don't have to be violent to demand your right. Okay. You don't have to be, uh, to be violent. All you need to do is, you could sit down still and say, I'm not going to work. You can say, I'm going to seize economic activity. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. You don't have to be violent. But we must get to a point when people realize that true power belongs to the people. Okay. And it is only when people realize that they are the custodians of power and they are the ones that elect and remove the leaders, then and only then would we have a better society. Look at what is happening in Ghana. Look at what's happening in our neighboring societies. These, these areas are developing, they are growing. We, for goodness sake, we generate power and send to Ghana. We don't have constant electricity, but they have been able to learn to manage that resource and manage it effectively that they have, 20, they, they have like 24-7. So what is wrong with us? What is wrong with us? It, doesn't, it didn't re require violence in Ghana. It didn't require violence anywhere else. So why must I advocate violence? All I'm saying is that our people must begin to demand accountability from the leadership. Because okay. we don't demand accountability, we don't demand them to be accountable for the resources that we put at their disposal, then that they can why they frolic get away with it. With they can do anything they like with it. And okay. because you don't demand accountability, they're not... Men, they're not supposed to account to you because you have not demanded, have no it. demanded it. So we okay. must demand it. And it, it doesn't have to be violent. I, in fact, I oppose violence. I don't think it should even be violent. It should be so peaceful that they are disarmed. They, are, they okay. don't know what to do anymore. 
Okay, now we are still um, talking about uh, Nigeria and uh, the renewed government demands on fuel subsidy removal. If you're just joining us, that is our topic, and we have said quite a bit. Now, I remember that um, during that peaceful uh, protest that we had when the government initially came up with uh, the subsidy removal initially, I also remember them promising us that there were going to be palliatives, you know, um, they were going to um, take the money and put in the fund, the show P and all of that. Have we seen any of such? I mean, let us, let's, let's determine whether the government actually did what they said they would do. Having removed some, you know, it was like a partial removal. Having brought down the, the pump price from 141 naira to 97 naira, mm -hmm. and they promised that they were going to do these things. Did we see that from your point of view? Did we see any of from the promises? From my point of view, and I'm sure from your point of view, and from the point of view of the masses in Nigeria, nothing was ever done. And that is why I go back to the issue about accountability. It is only an irresponsible government that will say to people, that we are going to do this. The people have done their bit. They have accepted the 97 Naira per liter. Okay. Why can government not do its own bit? Provide the social palliatives that they promised, provide the infrastructure, do what they said that they will do in return. Because if they fail to do those things, when they do come back to us again with another increase, we must hold them to account and say, okay, we will listen to you. But the last time, this is what you told us. We allowed you to increase the fuel, or to leave the price at 97 Naira. But since then, what have you done with all the monies that have accrued to government? They must be made to account for it. If they cannot account for it, then why should you put more money at their disposal? It's just like if you have a son, he goes to school, you give him pocket money, maybe it's 1,000 Naira, and he comes back two days later and says he's finished it. The next thing you should do is, son, how did you spend this money? Yeah. Give me an account. And if he accounts for it in a way that shows that he has spent the money judiciously, as a good father or mother, you would give them more money. But if they cannot make an account, then what would you do? You would withhold. I would suggest that if they cannot account for the money, Nigerians would withhold their assent of the proposed fuel increase. Okay. Now, um Going ahead, I have this question. I'm going to read it out the way it is here. It says, anti-corruption crusader Debo Adeniramo, who, who is the initiator of the Coalition Against Corrupt Leaders, um, actually did call on Mr. President Gulak Jonathan to occupy himself with ridding the oil sector of corrupt practices and recovering the loot from those who shortchange the nation rather than advocate for fuel subsidy removal. Do, do you agree with that? What's, what's your take? Instead of have, that, what else can be done? I would have just applauded, you know, applauded him because that is what I believe that Nigerians want. You see, I take it from a, a different perspective. You have a government. There's always what they call signaling in whatever we do in life. There's signals. Okay. If you go this way, you signal. You turn left, you signal to say, I want to turn left. When government says we're going to do something, they are sending a signal to the people saying, these are our roadmap. Now, when you have a government that pardons people that have been convicted of criminal activities, my old parents will say, show me your friends, and I will tell you who you are. If the government is parleying, with the likes of Alamasia, okay? And those are the people who have grievously harmed and wronged this nation. And the government decides that they are going to forgive them, pardon them for having looted this nation. Then the government is obviously giving us signals. They are telling us that this is the direction we want to go. These are our friends. So by implication, government is saying that they are friends of the likes of Alamasia, the friends of people like Bode George, who have all been convicted criminals, and if those are their friends, then by implication, they are saying that they are one and the same. Okay. Okay? And now, such people should not even near one mile of a government treasury, let alone be seen frequently in Asorok. If we had 
good leadership, they would dispose of these people like lepers, like a plague, and say, look, I don't want to be seen near you. You have not accounted or you have not discharged yourself reputably in public. Okay. And so when Debo is, uh, is saying what he's saying, I agree with him. I say government should stop all this nonsense of saying we are going to ensure that all the fuel thieves are prosecuted. Where is Ali's son today? Where is Bamanga Tuku's son today? Have they been prosecuted? Has anything come out of it one year on? Come on, they should stop fooling people. All they want is more money to be able to spend. To spend more and money. we're not going to give them more money to spend. We should withhold giving them recognition to spend or assent to spend more money. money. All government wants to do is find a solution where they can, again, dip deeper into the Nigerian treasury and loot us dry. Okay. Loot us dry. I think the time is here. The time is now that we must begin to say enough is enough. Okay. Now, in the beginning, when we talked, you said that it is not possible for the country to indefinitely pay subsidy on yeah. fuel yes. and other products. Now, what, in your opinion, might be a likely alternative to the removal of subsidy if we cannot continue doing that, but at the same time, we do not want the removal of fuel subsidy? What else can the government do or what else can the country do to um, forestall maybe a situation where we find ourselves totally bankrupt because we cannot continually paying subsidy? What could be an alternative to okay. that? Um, Common sense will say to anyone, if you have a deficit in your home, what do you do? You will begin to itemize and list out all the things you spend your money on. Okay. okay? So government should do the same. They should look at the budget. They should itemize the things that they have spent the money on. Okay? And then find out whether these things are actually going to produce social good. Because the things that go, the pet projects of government are not things that are producing social good, unfortunately. They are things that are just recurrent expenditure, just keep spending money, keep spending money. We're going to have a first ladies forum, invite the whole world, let them come and eat and drink at Nigerian expense. The first lady wants to build uh, a palatial uh, home for heads of state that, wives of heads of state that come. How does that benefit the average Nigerian? I think what government should do, rather than encourage waste, they should become a bit more prudent. We have a situation right now. They are spending billions and billions and billions of dollars trying to re resuscitate the power sector. I'm sorry. This is not going to be the first government that is going to do that. The previous government and the government before that and the all government before that have that. all put in billions and billions and billions of dollars into this same project. We have not gone anywhere. And I think the time should come when people must say, you know what? This much you have spent. Why should we give you more money to spend on this project? Because you have not been accountable. You have not utilized the money in any way that, you know, would make the average man say, okay, let me give them another chance. Instead of talking about fuel subsidy, I believe that what government should be doing is saying, how can we judiciously spend the ones that are the monies that are available that to us that. right now. Okay. How can we spend it judiciously? How can we spend it in a way that it benefits the average man on the street? How can we spend it in a way that it produces social good? Because if government does not spend that money in that way, then it is wasteful. And why do you want to tax people for wasteful expenditure? I think government should go back, sit down, gather all the I'm not an economist, but gather all the economists and if I'm I don't understand economics right but i know what they should be doing then they that are in power in government who have given themselves and put themselves for that they want to serve this nation i think they should be a little bit more forthcoming with realistic options as to how this country can be governed better this issue of light is the piv is very pivotal and very crucial if there's no light there's no development okay. there will be duplication of resources every home in Lagos, every home in Abuja will be born in diesel, all duplicating and wasting resources. I think government should concentrate its effort first on producing power for the people, energy and power for the people. 
They should reconstruct our roads, for goodness sake. They should provide water. It is a shame that you cannot go to any particular city in Nigeria, turn on the tap, and say that this water has come from the water board. Not even in Abuja. A lot of homes still have boreholes. Bore holes, yes. And we are there spending billions of naira saying we're entertaining the world or we're bringing the world or we're... It, 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 it defeats it common sense. sense. It defeats common sense. Okay, um, I want us to quickly get to the issue of corruption. Now, just like um, the anti-corruption crusader, Adeba Deniro, who we talked about earlier. Yeah. Now, some other advocates, like the convener of the Save Nigeria group, for instance, um, alongside other civil societies and civil groups, say that um, President Jonathan must, first of all, deal decisively with the issue of corruption, especially within that sector, within the petroleum sector, before talking about the total removal of fuel subsidy. And I'm asking, is it possible for Mr. President to do so in his current position? You know, is it possible for him to, to do all that considering the current trend of unresolved corruption cases? There are so many plus the ones that we have forgotten that we don't remember anymore. Is it possible for him to do that? And if it is, how can he go about doing that? Um, Mr. President is in a very awkward situation. I realize it, and I believe a lot of Nigerians realize this. I would not want to be in his position. For the simple reason that you cannot pay lip service to, corruption, to reading Nigeria of corruption when all your activities, when your kitchen cabinet are all known corrupt people. The kind of and quality of advice that you're going to get from them would never be that that would advance the real interest of Nigeria. Even if Mr. President was himself an angel from heaven, who does not spend money, who does not eat food, who does not live on, in, on what, sleep on water beds or live in mansions, it will be very difficult when you surround yourself with people who are known thieves with people who are known to be corrupt, okay. with people who are known not to provide good example. Okay. Now, and that takes me back to what I said about Alama Sier and about people like Bode George and the rest. And, you know, I'm just mentioning those two, okay. unfortunately, but you know that the society is replete with people like that. Why would the government even think of putting these people, you know, it's just like you're in a church or in a mosque. And then the, your leaders are people who everybody in the congregation knows is a fornicator. Okay, so very quickly, what does he have to do? To he just has to that? get rid of all of them. If he is not, if he's incapable of leading, throw in the towel. But you can no longer continue playing, paying lip service to, to this issue of, I'm going to make sure we get you know, rid of corruption in Nigeria. Take the bull by the horn. Do That's something it. that the Nigerian people can see and then believe that, yes, indeed, this man is ready to fight corruption. Okay. But right now, I don't believe he is. Okay, like they say, action speaks louder than voice. Thank you. And finally, in, uh, very briefly, what must the Nigerian do? We've talked about demanding that they be held accountable. What else can the Nigerian do to, uh, you know, be part of this and to make sure that um, this, does, this trend does not continue? Very quickly. The Nigerians sentence. are very docile people, but I believe they must be up and doing. They, may be, they must begin to educate themselves with the trends and the happenings in society so that when decisions are being made that concern them are being made where they are being made, they will immediately be able to stand in opposition and say, no, this is not the way we want to go. Nigerians must begin to demand their rights. They must begin to be demand for good leadership, they must begin to demand for accountability, they must take their governors up on issues, they must take their legislators up, they must take everybody up. Nigerians, be, be up and doing. Don't sit there like a zombie, do something, do something. We're not, you're not doing it for me, you're doing it for yourselves, you're doing it to improve your nation. Look at your neighbors, look at Ghana, look at other countries around you. The people are not as docile as you. Why have you become so docile, Nigeria? Why are you so docile? I ask okay. that question. Okay, that question being asked, uh, but what is important is, like you said, you know, we must begin to demand that um, our leaders be held accountable. And for our leaders, if um, your actions don't 
show that you're really sincere about that and all you're doing is paying lip service and like my guest said maybe you should step aside and let someone else who actually can do that take over thank you so much i have been talking with patrick olise mecca who is a social expert and an analyst he also is the ceo of mid speech nigeria limited it's been a pleasure talking with you today we have been considering the removal or rather the renewed government demands on fuel subsidy removal in Nigeria and it has been very insightful. Now remember we'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Let's Talk. Ooh, love.